Hello and welcome to another live code hangout. Today we're working on the Western Friend website. We're in the process of a kind of a large task to port our payment processor over to use PayPal. Currently on the back end, we're using um, Braintree payment processor, which is now a subsidiary of PayPal. And I can close this real quick and let it update. But uh, sort of a last minute decision was made to switch over to PayPal. You know, that's not with every decision is um, has trade offs. So it's what I'm exploring today. And one of the trade offs is that we, for the simplest implementation, the most uh, basic, that I can fit in this time frame. We're going to basically need to follow PayPal's design system and uh, embed really uh, basic PayPal widgets in our site. I'm not. <clears throat> I don't have the capacity right now to do a full-fledged uh, redesign and development of our payment system at this late stage in the project. This is a five-year-long project that I really just think is time to launch. Uh, the code works as it is with Braintree, but the code doesn't work as it, with PayPal yet, so we have to figure out how that'll work. Before I get too deep in the code, I want to sketch out what it'll look like so I can communicate my findings. So here we are. Basically what I'm going to do today is, uh, and we can, we can customize these, that's good. We're going to just use the regular PayPal button so, uh, design. And I'll just, um, now why didn't it put that in there, let's go back. So, it's unfortunate. Uh, organization, oh, okay. Alright. Strange. Keyboard organ. Well, this is just par for the course for the um, PayPal development experience. Just random stuff, just not working, just being really kind of mediocre. All right. Can't change the damn store name. This is in Chrome browser as well. I've changed the project name here. It's not an input. It's an input. But go figure that JavaScript could let a JavaScript developer break a browser input. Like leave it to the JavaScript ecosystem to break break basic functionality of a web browser. Wow. Our analytics won't load. 
and it's kind of causing their page to break. Is that what's happening here? Weird, man. Weird. All right, well, this is sufficient. And what I can do is just grab a screenshot of this. Just trying to think, it would be nice to show this a bit in the context of the Western Print site. Let's go ahead and um, save this to the desktop for now. Quick scratch. And um, I don't think how details I should be. I can grab Inkscape. Unfortunate name, and it just doesn't, I don't think, really work for design. Karita might, but it's also. Inkscape's vector design tool, um, but it has nice layers and uh, I can move objects around and stuff really simple. So yeah, you know, let's go with that. Yeah, this is nice. So it's got some nice prefab uh, templates, for example. Let's go with that. And then what we can do is essentially hmm,
Well, <laughs> grab the heading. Let's get a little bit organized. I don't usually save stuff to my desktop. <clears throat> I just this is kind of a one-off project, and just for communication purposes, I don't want to get too elaborate with that. But that's called heading ping print screen. We'll grab the donate pay intro text. Actually, why don't I just I don't need that. a screenshot of that. So what we can do now is come back over here and I can import the desktop WF sketch heading. <clears throat> we'll embed that and scale it. It's pretty big. Oh, shoot. Can I undo that? There we go. There you go. I scale it proportionally. <clears throat> not bad all right now I'd like a white background or basically this color it's not it's a little off-white <clears throat> do we have a color chooser I thought there was a color chooser here. Well, it's the same thing. It'd just be a little bit easier if I could back on. F O F four F seven. Oops, what am I doing? So we'll just grab like a rectangle. <clears throat> Make it big. F O F four F seven. And then we will object lower to bottom. There we go. And you know, scale it to the same as the display. You know, you know. <clears throat> All right, now that's basically going to be unmoving. Let's see, why don't we zoom in and out and stuff like this? And control Alt and Alt Shift, scroll wheel is panning and such, but I would like to zoom out. I'd better save this project before I get carried away. There should be a uh, way I can zoom with the mouse, right? Imagine, kind of really weird. <laughs> letters, how do we get letters? Typography, let's say 42. Yeah, this is just a, a mock up. It's a mock up, so we don't want to get too fixated, but uh, it's not that bold. 
see it's missing some nice formatting options here. I just want a bold button. <clears throat> I'm not sure how much, <clears throat> you know, usability focus goes into open source, but or how much they just observe people using it in general. I think it's a really big area of investment. And I donate to open source, so I'm not being cheap. All right, but basically what we're going to do now is it's got this thing that I need to take a screenshot of. Still can't quite get it. Is there something else? Weird, I don't know why I can't just get rid of this dang thing. Well, I guess I did. And now this can come to the full. Nope, I can't get rid of it. Such a weird design. Well, it's basically changing the whole user experience because now we, we have this modal. We don't even need a page dedicated to it. It's 
So this this isn't necessary. I'd like to just crop this image just a bit. Can I edit it or crop it? No, but maybe I can put a, a semi-opaque overlay behind it uh, like this. So if I grab something like that, just do the same thing. But the color can be black, but Okay, you have a whole thing button here that just opened a new document. Yeah, what are all these doing over here on the side? This is strange. Text properties. Ooh, what a nice. All right, so when I double click this before it got there, here we go. So then what happens is it's a bit opaque, it's a bit opaque, and then I can drop it a little bit behind that. So essentially it would look like that. So yeah, basically the problem being, it's just a little X there, nothing. And I'll just go ahead and replace that right now because it's not correct. That should just be white. Fully opaque. And then put a little text Western friend. I'll put it here for a second. That can be gray and uh, 14, 20. We'll move it, Tony, to Western Friend. Looks all right. And again, this could be, the cool thing about the modal is we don't need a dedicated page per se. Yeah. Just have a donate button and click it anytime. Now, the subscribe page. It's gonna be a bit different, but, you know, I think if we can reach this compromise, it'll be an improvement. Right now our subscription page is, is nice and uh, we've done good work to make it very user friendly, but it's the, it's so complicated. because there's so many choices and that's made it unnecessarily complicated. So. I think it's just if you wanna show multiple
I gotta find a new one. New features. Sign in over here again. One moment. Business, business, copy to clipboard, copy to clipboard. Let's copy that, copy that. Oh, because it's sandbox. Okay, 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 okay. Although. So there's that. What about a subscribe button? Hmm. You can edit it. Can I pop in just a little bit of extra text? A free field that lets them add a little bit of uh, freeform text. Because we would like to do double purpose this as donate slash pay. This is a kludge. Honestly, if I think if um, Western friend wants to accept payments, they need to use the invoicing thing that it's just not the reason this is here. All right, so we're going to go on to the subscription part. So basically, I think what I'm going to do is um, first find the docs. Which is already a pain in the ass with PayPal. I guess I'm just in a bit of a grumpy mood. Don't mind me. I just went full circle though. Oh, Boy, Kesty.
Uh, I'd just like to show what it looks like, though. This is the one I need to keep as a reference. Keep all my references here. basically look like that and that's easy to do and we'll fix those texts but the gist of it is choices I'll embed a couple of these <clears throat> A B C so I duplicate control D for duplicate oh yeah I did have a bunch of them Nice and aligned. Huh. I guess that doesn't do anything. Really? Snap. Snap. How do I enable snapping? Well, I can visually snap, align, distribute. There's the thing align and distribute. We will align them top of the page. I see what happened. Uh, the page is selected this way. <laughs> yeah, looking good. Distribute evenly. All right, now we'll zoom in on it. Essentially, just block of thing white. Is there an eyedropper here? I think if I go into the color select, color chooser, there's probably an eyedropper here where it's relevant. That's good. Two, three, very cool. Zoom in, check the chat real quick. Usually nobody's there. So we all want text.
this is my opinion, but we currently have a, we have a PDF only, we have print, we have print and PDF, and then we have international. But I think if you're paying for a print subscription, the PDF is like no cost. It, we should just include that. And it's a simple thing to reduce the number of our subscription options by just including PDF in print subscription. And then we have an international that has a slightly different value. So what it'll cost is one moment. Let's just say the uh, basic PDF. See, this is where I think we have just one extra. And this international is like, I guess, what does that imply? International implies paper. We're shipping it internationally. Otherwise, it would be PDF. The international doesn't matter. So it's a bit of a weird situation. Unless 39. We're ready to do this. We're going to pull it through, though. I really want to kind of launch this project. We've been working on it for a while. 39, 45. I guess it looks better without this space. And international because shipping is what it is. Ah, shoot, that should be 57. Ah, it's 57. International is 85. Oops. And just to make sure it's clear. All right, now what we're going to do is just grab these, do some alignment stuff, center them so they look nice. Then we will grab that, do some centering. Oh, I should have done it like this. Center everybody. Center everybody. Yeah, I mean, overall, I can escape. It's good, good stuff. Open source, really solid software. Bit of a learning curve like any software. Some UX clumsiness, despite it being fairly mature. But I think that's about it. So what I'm trying to emphasize is that our user experience, if we switch to PayPal, is going to be governed by the PayPal user experience as well as the developer experience, which as I explored in detail in the last session is pretty weird but it's like an out of band process that just that's the way paypal does this thing you know these trigger like a modal that makes request directly in the paypal server this data all lives on the paypal server the prices and everything you know i can't do really so much of validation i can't send the payment nonce through our server to the paypal server it's got to come through paypal and back to us through a webhook kind of a deal it's really weird i don't recommend it in fact, I don't see PayPal used for subscriptions 
ever. Probably because it's so weird. And I'm not the only one who thinks it's weird. PayPal, oh, for payments, of course. Yeah, the payment experience was fine. And I uh, got that working in a couple of hours, about eight hours of figuring it out and all that good stuff. Working in small bits. But yeah, all right, so these are the things I've found. And now let's share them. So this is the thing. This is the thing. What I will do is I will use ChatGPT. To help me write a summary. Poop on it. I'm not signed in. I'll write my own words. <laughs> I write a lot. It's like what I mainly do at work. I write all the time. Not complaining. It's interesting work. Actually, I can just do this, I think. Export it. I don't have to do that. I mean, either. Oh, then I can annotate it. Yeah, annotations. All right, here we go.
And I'm not going to gripe about the other little details and nuances that are not so relevant, but I do want to emphasize the fact that the um, design, the aesthetics, and the user flow prices and everything is going to be owned by PayPal, basically. And that's the trade off. Um, bit more and I'm pretty much I'm pretty sure I will be able to synchronize the users so I'm not going to mention that it's a technical detail but I believe in the callback when the subscription succeeds we get a an accepted or something hook in our PayPal client JavaScript, I can make a, and it'll have the pay, uh, subscription ID. Um, I can make a call to our server that creates a Western friend subscription instance, fetches the details from PayPal to validate the subscription and expiration date and such and such. Yeah, and then things will be good to go. It will unlock the subscriber only features of the website for that user who's signed in. So I think we're good to go there. I don't think I need to mention that. Less is more, and this is already a lot of information. Is that even a... I think it's a net gain is I'll just be able to remove a bunch of code for Braintree. You know, conversely though, if we wanted a proper Braintree-like experience or Stripe-like checkout experience, uh, subscription and uh, donation experience, particularly with PayPal, I would have to write a ton of code, just a ton of code, more than with Braintree. I think Stripe and Braintree would probably be about on par based on how they're using more modern, I guess, that's word gets used a lot, I don't know a better phrase, but they're using a different checkout mechanism, this nonce where there's like a bit of trust that's shared between the invalid validated by the payment pro processor and then the nonce can get passed around in a way that doesn't let the user or the server kind of manipulate the agreement. I think that's the right way to go and it's Braintree does it and I took a while, figured it out, got it working and uh, allows our server to do a little bit more than just 
saying, yep, payment success. You know, I can actually inspect things. I can create model instances, all sorts of good stuff there. Validate. So. Keyboard is dead. Or something happened. Huh. Dang, this is good work here. I don't want to lose it. What's it going on? Firefox. What the heck, man? All those little gotchas. It's got a memory leak or something. figure should type it over here
Sounds good. Let's export some pings. Page. That looks good. Donate ping. Wait a minute. Shucks. <laughs> I see what I did there. See what I did there. It didn't start working on the copy when I saved a copy. User experience or user inexperience? But what I can do is just simply rename them. File browser. Flipper. WF sketch. Here's the modal, there's the, oh my gosh. I wonder if I can just drop these SVGs in the chat. Boom. We got the ping ball here. Export, donate, save it, I guess. Hiccups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is basically what we do nowadays. We make you know arbitrary payments off these little apps like venmo and good stuff like paypal we're using that to pay our fish man here the local guy he sells fish on saturdays smoked salmon we pay him with whatever we use over here in europe yeah, i think we're pretty good those are my findings committing to that one hour on the money, uh, a little bit over one hour. I think overall this is not bad. It's not bad at all. It's going to be a bit of a shock to have to have fewer options, less optionality, less choice, less complexity. But we can replace those with things that are actually well maintained. Like this service is, you know, maintained. It's a lot on the line, a lot of people using it. Whereas my little, you know, code here, well, I'm the only maintainer. And granted, I'm hooking into these other systems, but, you know, we have this thing where you, we kind of kludged in allowing people to pay on a donations page. Eh. This is amateur stuff, amateur hour. But we're amateurs in this project. It's all right. No shame in the game. We're getting it done. And sometimes you have to compromise, you know? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. We don't have, we're doing this in our spare time, essentially. Uh, building a big website over the course of five years. It's a big project. It's interesting. It's slow going. It's a nonprofit organization, so we don't really have the resources to have a full-time engineering team.
team with front end and back end engineers and doing a single page application, all this good stuff that is so common. I'm, you know, I think we've done pretty good with what we've, we've got and we're going to simplify a little bit more and hopefully launch this pretty soon. I mean, I don't know what else is in, missing or needs to be fixed, but yeah, hopefully we'll be out of staging in the next few weeks. All right, well, this has been another live code session. I suppose we didn't do any code today, but coding isn't always about code. It's developments involves communication, research, you know, visual mock-ups and all these kinds of things, which are forms of communication and ideation. So yeah, clearly these last couple of sessions haven't been proactive and productive in terms of like lines of code written, features shipped, but they certainly have been informative. And now I'm hoping to communicate what I found to Mary Klein, the editor of Western Print Magazine, at our weekly meeting tomorrow, and where we'll hopefully arrive at a decision about the next steps to take with the project payment system. All right, well, thanks for checking out this video if you're on watching it on YouTube or after the fact. Hope you're doing well, and have a great day.